Buongiorno. Uh, first of all, on behalf of Professor Rafael Moreira, I would like to thank the generous invitation from the Academy de San Luca. Unfortunately, Professor Rafael Moreira uh, cannot be here. He apologizes for that because he has just arrived from Galicia, northern Spain, and uh, unfortunately, as I said, he could not be here. Uh, and um, I would also like to thank Professor Rafael Moreira for inviting me to uh, represent him here and present the communication we have both uh, prepared. Uh, the communication I'm about to present is the uh, first survey uh, that is publicly presented about the use of uh, scale models in Portugal from 16th to 18th century. And this communication crosses to other investigations. The investigation uh, that Professor Rafael Moreira <coughs> is being conducted from a long time now. He's a key scholar to understand Renaissance art and architecture in, Portuguese, in Portugal, and also a key scholar to, under to understand military architecture in, Port in Portugal. And my own investigation from my PhD, which I'm about to conclude, and tries to understand the importance of the use of scale model in the definition of the profession of the architect as we understand it today, uh, um, which origins are obviously in the, in the Renaissance and in the, and in the treatise of the uh, Alberti. So, a scale model is first referred in Portugal in 1422 when King Juan II, the perfect prince, who brought us Florentine art with sculptor, thank you, Andrea uh, Sansovino, and admirer Francisco di Giorgio Martini, founded the Franciscan nunnery of Jesus Stubal with a replica of the church in movable wood, as it built in stone, probably a one-to-one -one scale. Small-scale wood models appear in early 16th century paintings. Rooms in Italianate manner, linked by steps but without facade, as a dollhouse, served painters of King Manuel I to simulate interior pictorial space, as in Grão Vasco's paintings or Jorge Afonso altarpieces. The Manuelin school of painting has Flemish late Gothic figures in Renaissance Italian backgrounds. An account by Professor Rafael Moreira of Princess Beatriz's marriage to the Duke of Savoy shows this was a common practice. Visiting in 1521 with the Duke a church in Villefranche-sur-Mer, Nice, the author of that account says the king was such a master in building that not only was satisfied in making works, but wanted first to see them cut out and open carved without um, a wall as in uh, half models. To see real models in our sense, we must wait for high Renaissance and reign of King Juan III. None survived, but they were usual in building. Scale models were sent from Italy to Lisbon, as the Modelo del Palazzo, inspired in Palazzo Farnese, since Howard Burns, offered by Cardinal Gadi, in 1549 to King Juan III, which thanked, saying he took, and I quote, a great pleasure in this model because of the artifice with which it was done and the good manner of it and the affection I have for the science of architecture. Or the superb model sent in 1514 or 15 from Florence by Giacomo Sansovino at the request of King Manuel I for the tomb of King Juan II, and I quote, full of scenes and figures in wax, made by Il Tribal, as Vasari tells. So, we, assume, so uh, we so presume that Portuguese word modelo have the same meaning of a three-dimensional model. There are many, uh, all of them of 16 colonial forts. Gonçalo Bayon was a member of the household of Prince Cardinal Dom Henrique, King Juan III's brother. He visited Rome in 1533, measuring with his hands ancient monuments advised, advised by Maestro Francesco da Carmona, private architect of Dom Miguel da Silva, Bishop of Viseu, to whom Castiglioni dedicated in 1528 his Libro del Cortigiano. This Lombard Muratori was brought in 1525 by the learned bishop to Portugal from Rome, where he worked in San Pietro since Bramante. 
in 1514, a document revealed by Professor Christopher Frommel. He was the first contractor to sign with Raffaello uh, to build the pilasters of the Capella del Re di Francia. Return from Rome before 1538, Bayan was charged by the king to make a few modelos of the ancient uh, monuments he had seen. In a 1547 letter to King Juan III, he says he's making, and I quote, the ancient monuments he had seen. Uh, he had seen, I'm sorry, um, the, Colise the Colosseum in a small model, which I'm doing in salty palms wide. It was about 30 meters, uh, two meters diameter. Uh, and I did a great part of it and it's go on it's in its perfection as all the other things which would uh, already be finished if the work of the Colosseum wasn't that big. Done with very small things necessary to be well done and understood. It took five years to uh, complete this model of the Colosseum. So, guided by Cremona, Bayon made in 14, uh, 1540s some models of Roman monuments, mostly a huge one of the Colosseum. All were destroyed in the 1755 earthquake in Lisbon. According to an Italian uh, traveler, future King José I, as a young boy, amused himself playing with his Colosseum, taking out and putting in pieces, as in the Lego building, which shows it was a composite, very complex model. References to uh, architectural models became rarer. João Batista Lavagna, after six years in Italy, from 1572 to 1578, praises the use of models as a way to visualize a project before building, and I quote Lavagna, it is best represented by the model, which is the perfect image of all parts of a work. It embraces all other four parts, because in the model we see plan, section, profile, and perspective. But this is a theoretical assertion loosely based on Alberti. The turning point is uh, Antonio Rodrigues, the uh, King Sebastian royal architect after four years in England, in, uh, in Italy, from 1516 to 1564. In his two volumes work on building, the only treati architectural treatise in Portugal from the 16th century, he copies Pietro Catania, and I quote, it is convenient that the one who makes profession of architects understands perspective to show by it the exterior, the exterior as well as the interior of the building in foreshortening to spare the expenses in a model of wood or wax or clay. Or, or clay. The principles of economy and geometricism guiding by Kubler's Portuguese plain style seal the end of Renaissance lure for three-dimensional models. Golden age of Indian spice trade and Italian connections is replaced by Habsburg power and war until 1640 when the dynasty of Braganza regains the throne. Contrary to what happens in the 17th century, references to models adoptions are diversified in the 18th century. The oldest preserved models are also from this period. The vast majority of known models are above all of works sponsored by King Juan V this period would be, known, would be known by the construction efforts of the king to which contributed in the decisive way the architect João Frederico Ludovis. King João V would benefit from a long and peaceful reign and from the wealth, gold and diamonds coming from Brazil. He tried to make Lisbon a new Rome. Johann Frederick Ludwig Ludvici, as he, as he decided to call himself in Italian, a German, comes to Lisbon in 1701, hired by the Jesuits, coming from Rome, where he had worked at the Church de Jesus, and where he had met Carlo Fontana. He brought the value of the model learned from Italian design practice. Several model references are known from that period. Indeed, King Juan V had a vast collection that included models from different churches and palaces of Rome, a civil model of the Fontana dei Quattro Fiumi by Bernini, and an enormous wooden model of San Pietro, besides numberless architectural drawings, engravings, and paintings. They were, as Angela Della Force outlines, and I quote, a recreation of the grand tour he never made and of the city of Rome he never saw, end of quote. 
Alongside those models, maybe some of the ones made by Gonçalo Bayon might still be found. Ancient Rome would there before coexist with Baroque Rome. All these models vanished with the earthquake. It is known that several models were made for the Convent de Mafra, which you can see here on the image, uh, which uh, is King Juan V's major work. Designed by Ludwitz, its construction began in 1717. It is also known that models of the project of Ludwitz design for the Agros Livres Aqueduct, meant to bring water to Lisbon, began being made. Also, the project actually built from 1731 wasn't his. All these models are vanished. But two of these uh, period models raise a particular attention. The model of the apse of Everest Cathedral and the model of the chapel of San Juan Baptista for the Jesuit church of San Roque in Lisbon. The construction of the new apse uh, of Evra was taken by King Juan V in 1716 after him visiting the existing Gothic apse. The king ordered a new apse designed by Ludwig, who would begin it in 1718. Antonio Bellini di Padova would elaborate the sculptural decorations. <coughs> the project model was made in Lisbon by carver João Vicente in 1720 from Ludwig's drawings. João Vicente had his own workshop in Lisbon dedicated to the execution of altarpieces. The model was approved by the king and sent to Ever, being forgotten after the conclusion of the work. In the 19th century, it was reassembled, now has a chamber of the Senhor dos Passos image in the convent of San Francisco at Ever. It is a curi curious invention. Uh, in, the, in the curious invention, the model was now turned into architecture. The model is elaborated at scale 125, being made in painted wood, which simulates marble colors and drawings. It included a miniature of the altarpiece panel. The level of detail is highly elaborated, especially in the ceiling's decoration. On the construction's point of view, the model is made as an altarpiece. The finishing of what is shown contrasts with the lack of the attention of what is hidden. The difference towards the finished work confirm a continuous elaboration of the project which reflects on its sides the relativeness of the work by the time it was beginning. The chapel of San Juan Baptista for the Jesuit Church of San Roque in Lisbon was one of the later King Juan V works. It was ordered in 1742 to Nicola Salvi and Luigi Van Vitelli. The project results of exchanges of correspondence and drawings, sometimes a harsh one, being Ludovici decisive as in imposing the rich solution. The chapel began being undertaken in Lisbon in 1747 after being blessed in Rome in 1744 by Pope Benedictus XIV. It was finished in 1755. Recently uh, cleaned and restored, it's still it is still quite impressive due to, due to the cohesion and the extraordinary richness of its materials. The chapel model was made in Rome by cabinet maker Giuseppe Palms, the painter Giuseppe Focchetti and Giuseppe Foyet, and the miniaturist Gennardi Nicoletti between 1744 and 1747. It's not a Portuguese model, but we mention it because it might be less known in Italy. And as a model, it is one of an exceptional execution. The model is at scale 114, and it's made of golden and painted wood. The panel of the altarpiece is painted on copper, also in reality it is a mosaic. The model is as impressive in its detail as the chapel is in its richness. It was preceded by another one, now lost, by Giacomo Manicchioni in 1743. The model preserved corresponds almost entirely to the solution that ended up being built. It was a guide for the work setting up as if it was a metaphor of the true chapel, the model appears as an oratory. In the second half of 18th century, the adoption of model becomes diversified. <coughs> the first known model from that period is of a private work, the Quinta do Duque del Priata, in Granja del, the Quinta do, du, do Duque Palace in Granja del Priata, a few kilometers north from Lisbon. The palace was inhabited by Dom Pedro Henrique de Bragança, first Duke of Lafonge, who died there in 1761. The current construction in ruins is posterior, probably from 1780, when it gained the neoclassical entrance. Its author is unknown. The model here presented for the first time may correspond to the initial, the initial house or to an eventual alteration that was not accomplished. 
The Baroque taste allows us to think that it was a project prior to the neoclassical interventions. It is also unknown both its author and the model's author. The model was made approximately at scale 150, being executed with cardboard and painted plaster. The, detail, the details are merely drafted. The project holds similarities to some, to some of the uh, Charles Etienne Briseau projects presented on the first volume of the L'Art de Bâtir des Maisons de Campagne of 1743. References to other models are also known. There was a model of the ambassador's room at Calouche Palace, drawn by engraver Jean-Baptiste Robillon and executed in 1757. There was also a wooden model of the Royal Theatre of San Juan in Oporto, drawn by Vincenzo Mazoneschi, opened in 1791. And there was also a model of the bridge over Ribera de Sequevain by José of Dinier in 1792. The use of models was now extending to engineering and to teaching. The most important model from that period is one of the building of the Erario Regio, the Royal Treasury in Lisbon, designed by José de Costa Silva in 1789. Costa Silva traveled through Italy, attended Academia Clementina in Bologna, and was a member of this Academia in San Luca. Here can still be found the drawings he presented, this one, and this one. The Arado Reg would be a monumental and utopian work with a square plan with 19 meters long sides marked by a central octagon body topped by a dome. Its central void would have a Roman scale. Construction began in 1790, but would definitely come to a halt in 1797 for lack of money. The model may have been executed at the same time of the project in 1789. Its author, it's unknown, also that it is possible to may have been the woodcarver Antonio Angelo, who would produce in 1802 models of Costi Silva project for the Royal Palace of Ajuda in Lisbon. I was able to take part in the recent cleaning and reconstruction of this model in 2011. The model is executed in words and at, at approximately scale 144. It represents only the more complex part of the project. It holds detachable elements, allowing a better understanding of the interior. We enter in the model as if we were entering into the building. The precision of its execution is verifiable in its details, especially in the columns, for example, in the antithesis of the shafts, of the shafts and, on, and on the capitals. It is possible that it may have served as a presentation model, helping to explain an uncommon special solution. But above all, this model was meant to the construction work. Symptomatically, it was kept in construction sites. The model is set as if it, were a it was a building. The architectural construction logic prevailed over the carving technique. In this relation, the model is distinctive from all the other Portuguese known ones. As an example, in one of the arms section, it is possible to verify the corresponding pieces of the pavement, of the vault that supports it, and of the ceiling that would hide it. It is also possible to verify the pieces corresponding to the window stone frames. But throughout the 19th century, scale model would lose its previous importance. The first, this first systematization of the adoption of model, scale models in Portugal until uh, 18th century suggests some reflections. First, about wideness of this adoption that would involve besides regal works of major dimension, also minor and private works. Secondly, about the influence of the Italian practice in Portugal, since many of its users had Italian education. Finally, about its value as a design representation, since it surpasses the simple function of presentation. Muito obrigado. Grazie a Joao Miguel Cuto Duarte e a Rafael Moreira che ci ha fatto scoprire un aspetto, credo, molto inedito, molto nuovo di questo eh, ricorso al modello in Portogallo dal Cinquecento al Settecento e devo dire che questo è soprattutto per noi architetti contemporaneisti abbastanza una novità perché noi conosciamo soltanto le cose che derivano dall'encherito di Ferdinando Tavora per arrivare poi ad Alvaro Sisa, il ruolo che hanno avuto loro nel far conoscere la modernità, diciamo l'uscita dalla dittatura di Salazar ci ha portato 
conoscere soltanto o in particolare quegli aspetti e siamo contenti finalmente di scoprire anche questa Grazie dimensione mille. storica con un percorso molto parallelo, per adesso arrivavamo solo alla Spagna probabilmente, sì. e quindi grazie veramente. E la parola a uh, Christian Fulsker eh, dell'Università di Stuttgart che ci parlerà eh, fra i otto. Benissimo, grazie.